Hello and welcome to the lesson for 6.7 for CTM. If you do not have graph paper right now, but you can access it, if you can go get some, that would be a great idea, not only for these notes, but for this classwork as well as we're going through these problems. Graphing linear equations, that's what we're talking about today. And if you have graph paper, it's going to make your life way easier, not only in these notes, but on your classwork as well. So by the time we're done with this lesson, you should know what these terms are. These should be familiar to you if you've taken Algebra or Algebra 2, so you should know what these are at this point. Uh, we're going to be talking about Cartesian coordinate systems, basically the XY graphs uh, and drawing lines on those graphs. And So let's start by doing what I think is probably the easiest way to, to draw a line in some cases, but it's a little tedious at the same time too. So Tedious isn't necessarily a good thing. I, I don't know of any case where tedious is a good thing, actually. Uh, so sometimes though, this can be a little tedious, but it's always going to work. And it's kind of like a, a fallback that you can always come back to to check your answers. Or if you forgot a certain method, you could use this to still graph a good line. So plotting points are an XY table. Over here, I'm going to make my XY table. And then over here, I'm going to draw my graph. So I'm going to use some straight line tools to do that to make it look a little better. And I'm going to go with five in each direction right now. So about five, that's all I'll need. Looks like that'll be good. If you went six, it wouldn't be a big deal. Uh, or if you went seven or something like that. But I'm just going to go five in each direction. Okay, I'll do that for me. And don't forget your arrows. This goes on forever. So we're, we're drawing the coordinate plane here, the Cartesian coordinate plane, named after Rene Descartes. Uh, apparently, I was reading through the book here. It was pretty interesting that this, he was a, a little kid, and he was often a, a sickly child. He would lay in bed, and he kind of came up with this system, or a thought about this, while he was staring at a fly in the ceiling and thought about, oh, I could represent that fly's location on the ceiling using a coordinate plane or using something like this. Interesting that that's where it came from. Uh, but Rene Descartes, French mathematician, in the 1600s, born in 1596. And uh, So let's check this out, though. You plot points. So you're going to pick a value for x. Zero is usually a pretty easy one to do. So I'm going to start with zero. And for right now, I'm going to show you the values plugged in. So we're just going to use this formula that y equals 3x minus 2. Plug in 0 for x into this formula and see what value for y that gives me. So I'm going to have 3 times 0 minus 2. 3 times 0 is 0. 0 minus 2 is negative 2. So you have a point at 0, negative 2. This right here is your x-axis. This is the horizontal or the x-axis and this one's the y-axis. I keep those straight because y kind of has this tail. It's longer. In a sense, it's more vertical, and the y will be the vertical axis. x is the one that's running back and forth. And so we can assume that each grid line on here, we're going to make that assumption, unless I tell you otherwise that it is just 1. So this is 1, 2, 3, and so on. This is the point 0, 0 at the origin right there. So we have a point at 0, negative 2. So on the x-axis, I am not going to the right nor to the left. Uh, I have a value of 0. But on the y-axis, I'm going down 2. I'm going to negative 2. So 0, negative 2 would be that value right there. So that is that point. I'm going to plot that point. I'm going to label these points as well for right now. So this was 0, negative 2. Label the points on yours as well. So let's say I picked negative 1 as my next value. You wouldn't have to pick negative 1, but I'm going to keep it relatively close to this rather than pick negative 17. Uh, it's going to be way down here, way down here, maybe way up here. I, I want to stick pretty close to my value right there. And so I'm going to plug in negative 1 in for x and see what value that gives me for y. So 3 times negative 1 minus 2. Notice this is an independent variable here. This is just kind of out on its own, but then the y value depends on that value. That dependent variable is the y value because of that. So 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. Negative 3 minus 2 
that's negative 5. And so it looks like we had just enough space here on our graph for that one. We're going to have going back 1 on the x-axis here, negative 1, and down 5, negative 5. So this value, negative 1, negative 5 right there. And then I'm going to go positive 1 and see what that gives me. So positive 1, plug in a 1 right there. 3 minus, or 3 times 1 is 3. 3 minus 2 is 1 right there. And so these values, let's circle these in our different color. These values are the x values. These values are the y values. And that's where the y values are coming from by plugging those values in. So back to the graph. We've got this value at 1, 1 label that point right there and now I'm going to take a straight line you can use you know, a ruler maybe an edge of an ID something like that to make a nice straight line and as long as you are very careful with your scale if you didn't have graph paper you should always be being very careful with your scale so that you have a solid quality graph I can now draw in the line I'll make this part a little thinner so that it stands out a little bit more but that would be my line right there and that would continue going on in that direction and that direction forever and ever. So I could get another point right there. I could keep plotting these points. But I th hope you see that that was slightly tedious. It wasn't that bad uh, to, to do three points. How many would you really need? Yeah, two would do it for you. Yes, two points will make a line. But that third point is always good to draw a third point or to check a third point to make sure that you didn't make a mistake here or here. Because if that point wasn't on this same line formed by these two points you know something got messed up in there let's check out a second example where we use a different idea this idea of intercepts and so let's see here there we go graph 3x minus 4y equals 12 by using the x and y intercepts. So the word intercepts kind of sounds like intersects and that's really what it is. Where do they cross the x-axis? Where does it intersect the x-axis? Where does it intersect the y-axis? And so let's make a little table and I'm going to make a graph over here as well. So I'm going to do five in each direction again that'll be enough for this one. It's not always going to be enough, but I'm just telling you up front that this will work for this one. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, there we go. And going 5 in this direction there, this direction there. Put those arrows here. And then this is your x-axis, this is your y-axis once again. Then over here, I'm going to make kind of a table where I split this up into two parts here. Talk about x-intercepts on one side and y-intercepts on the other side. So over here, x-intercepts. And over here, y-intercepts. So the x-intercept, hopefully this makes intuitive sense. It's where it crosses the x-axis. And so what's the y value as you move along the x-axis? If your x-intercept was here, or here, or here, or here, it would not make a difference. The y value would always be 0. And so let's write that in here. This is where y equals 0. The y-intercept, in a similar manner, is going to be where the x value is always 0. It doesn't matter if it crosses here, or here, or maybe halfway in between there. It's where you have an x value of 0. So where x equals 0 is with the y-intercept. And so with that, we're just going to plug in 0 for y for this one, solve for x. We're going to plug in 0 for x for this one, and solve for y. And let's do that. So we have 3x minus 4 times 0 equals 12. That's going to be for the x-intercept, because that's where y equals 0. For the y-intercept, we're going to plug in 3 times 0 minus 4y equals 12 and solve that one for y. So right here, let's get out our different color. This would go away. You'd have minus 0. We don't need to think about that. Here you'd have 3 times 0. 0 minus 4y is still going to be a negative 4y. So this would simplify to 3x 
equals 12. This one simplifies to negative 4y equals 12. And then both sides here, show that in our different color, divide by 3 over here, divide by negative 4. That cancels, that cancels. You're left with x equals 4 in this case. And in this one, you've got y equals negative 3. So that means you have these points on the line. This is where y was 0. So you have an x value of 4 and a y value of 0. Therefore, y or x as 4 and y as 0, 4, 0, is a point on the line. And same thing over here, same idea. You had an x value of 0 and a y value of negative 3. Therefore, 0, negative 3 is a point on the line. That's also going to work. And so we'll plot those points on our graph. We've got 4 for the x value, 0 for the y value. So we're going 4 along the x-axis, 0 up or down. You've got a point right there. And you've got a point here at 0 for the x value, negative 3 for the y value. Going down 3, 0, negative 3. That's what we have here. This one is 4, 0. So connect those with a straight line. And that would go on forever and ever. And this I'm just going to extend out this way a little bit. And there we're good to go. And I do want to make one more little note over here. This right here is the x-intercept. I want to do that in my different color, though. There we go. So this right here was the x-intercept. That's where y equals 0. And this one right here was the y-intercept. And that's where x equals 0. So that's the intercept method where we set the values equal to zero, solve for the other variables, plot those two points, connect them. It would still be a good idea to find a point on here that would lie on the graph, or lie on the crosshairs. It looks like if you went down to here, if you could send this a little further, you'd have a point right here at negative four, negative six. And if you plugged in negative four, negative six in for your x value and your y value, you would get negative 12 here and you'd have positive 24 here, added those together, you would get 12. So that would check. That's a good way to check that you did that right. Let's check out a third example, but one quick thing to mention before we do that is slope. So the word slope, what does that mean? What does that refer to? I think most of us have this understanding that it's how steep something is, the slope, and that's exactly what it is in a mathematical sense as well. But when we're talking about slope, in terms of graphs, more specifically, more technically, it's vertical change on the top over horizontal change on the bottom. That's one way to consider it. You may have heard of rise over run. That means the same thing. Vertical change is the rise. Think of the sun rising and setting. It's going up and down. That's how I keep that straight. Run. When you run, you usually go back and forth the horizontal change there. Another way to write this, you might see this notation, this little delta, this triangle means delta in, in Greek, it's meaning change in, so that's another thing you might see. So let's make a little note of that right here, this means change in, so the change in y over the change in x, <coughs> excuse me, and then algebraically, you can write it like this, this probably looks familiar to you if you take an algebra y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So it's your two y values subtracted from one another and your two x values subtracted one from one another. You just have to keep the, the parts aligned like that. So that is what we have in terms of, in terms of slope. And oh man, what just happened there? What is this all about? I like to talk about you can believe it, Super Mario Brothers, when I talk about slope. I think it helps students understand. I, I bet you're all familiar, or at some point in your life have at least seen somebody play Super Mario Brothers, the original. I wouldn't say it's the best, but I'd say it's pretty good. I like Mario 3 a little better myself. 
uh, from the original Nintendo Entertainment System. Uh, but why the heck are you talking about Mario? Why does this help? Well, think about the the coordinate plane kind of being like your TV screen. So you're looking at a TV screen, and I want you to think of slope in terms of always moving left to right, just like Mario had to do. He always had to move left to right in the original. So uh, the original and Mario 2, I can't even remember now. Can he go? You can go back in Mario 2 and Mario 3, but you can't in Mario 1. So this is with Super Mario Brothers 1, the original. So you're always moving left to right there. And I think of slope that way as well. I always move left to right. So as I move left to right, if Mario gets to this point right here, he's got to go uphill. That's a positive slope right there. If he's going uphill as I move left to right. And as I move this way, moving left to right, and I go downhill, that's going to be considered a negative slope. We're going downhill and negative slope. Sometimes you might have to go a little more steeply uphill or more steeply downhill. So you have a steeper positive slope and a steeper negative slope, but it's still in that way. So I always think of slope going left to right. I think it's a helpful way to consider slope. Uh, but we'll talk more about that in the last couple of examples. But for right now, we're focusing on a problem, problem, blum, 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 a problem where I give you two points, two coordinate points, about a graph and you have to find the slope. So determine the slope of a line that passes through the points negative 4, 3 and 0, 5. And so, yeah, we could graph this and we could determine the rise and the run based on that. But when they give you the two points like that in their coordinate point form, what's really easiest is to use this right here. So we're going to find the solution by using this part right here. The solution would be that the slope equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Now, what are y1, what's y2, what's all that stuff? I don't understand that, Mr. Wagner. Hold on. We're getting there, all right? So this is your first coordinate point. This is your first x point right here. So let's call that x1. And let's call this one your first y point. Let's call that y1. Then, similarly, this would be x2 and y2. If you label them like that, it makes it really easy to plug them in. And so from here, let's just plug in the values just like I labeled them y2 is 5, so I'm going to plug in 5, minus y1. Careful here. See this mistake a lot? I don't want you to make it. So it's going to be y2 minus y1. Since it's a negative value, we're going to have to subtract a negative. We have that over 0 minus 3. That's x2 minus, did I mess that up? I certainly did. Maybe you caught my mistake there before. I did, um, but I'm glad I caught my mistake there. What did I mess up? I flip these two around. So, careful, 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 Mr. Wagner. Not good, not good. Y2 minus Y1, that's 5 minus 3. There we go. And 0 minus negative 4 would be X2 minus X1. This is going to equal 2 over, this will change to positive 4. So 2 over 4, you can reduce that to 1 half. So not real steep. That means you're going up 1 you don't have to draw this part down here, but you're going, if you were at a point right here on the coordinate plane, you'd go up one, the rise is one, and you'd go to the right two, and you'd have a new point. And that pattern would continue. You'd go up one, you'd go to the right two, you'd have a new point. If you went down one, that'd be like negative one over, if you went negative two, that's the same thing as positive one over positive two. And so this would be your line right there, at least that's how it would be sloped. So rise of one, a run of two, a rise of one, a run of two. But this is all we need for that, for this part. All right, now let's check out a fourth example where we'll use something called slope intercept form. So a good review, hopefully, of a lot of stuff from algebra, if you are familiar with algebra. And again, trying to, to make it as easy as possible to understand. I know slope can be a, a tricky thing for a lot of students in algebra. And I think having the graphs like this makes it easier to understand. Talking about Mario, yeah, makes it easier to understand. So we're going to write this in slope-intercept form. 
and we'll talk about what slope intercept form is in a moment and <coughs> excuse me and then graph the equation so what was slope intercept form slope intercept form is just this it's y equals mx plus b m stands for some number some constant number in front of the x b stands for some constant number that's not attached or not multiplied by the x and so this right here the m part stands for your slope and the b part stands for your y intercept they named it really nicely they called it slope intercept form the slope comes first the intercept comes after that so that's your slope that's your y intercept that's what slope intercept form is right there and so our solution what are we going to do we're going to take this equation let's write it down again we're trying to get y by itself could you plot points could you plug in a value for x and figure out what y is yes it would be a lot easier though if we solved for y first and then plugged in values for x and then did it that way that's another way you could fall back on but either way you do it though it's going to be easier to solve for y first so if I add 2x to both sides that will cancel here and here I'm left with 3y equals 2x plus 6 and then to get y by itself I want just plain old y not 3y divide that by 3 but if I divide that by 3 I have to change everything in the same way I have to divide everything by 3 that will leave me with y equals, we'll have a fraction here, 2 thirds x plus 2. I think this is a good time to bring this up to, don't write this off to the side, but if you write your fractions like this, stop doing that please, because it looks like, if you write it like that, I can't tell if you mean that this is like this, or if you mean that this is like this, or if you mean that it's this, which is the same thing as 2x over 3. I can't figure out what you mean by that. So this is a bad way to write fractions. Please write it like this and this. If you were to write this x on the bottom, that's not the same thing as this, because you'd be multiplying. That'd be like times 1 over x. We don't want that either. So write your fractions top to bottom like they should be, and then we'll put the x after that kind of in the middle. Uh, so we have this right here would be, in slope intercept form, a final answer y equals two-thirds x plus two. However, which part of this is your slope? Come on, there we go. This part is the slope. So that means your slope two over three. You're rising two, you're going up vertically two as you move to the right three. Positive values are going up and to the right. Negative values would be going down or to the left. This is your y-intercept right here. And so let's draw a graph to go along with this. There we go. And it looks like five in each direction. I've, I've made the notes where that works out. Five in each direction. So we got five there, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right. Let's make a careful graph here. The correct answer is contingent upon a careful graph. There we go. And we have our x values here, our y values are here. The y-intercept, where does it cross the y-axis? Well, that's going to be right here at positive 2. So we've got a, a point that we can plot right there. And the slope of 2 over 3, that means you have a rise of positive 2 and a run of positive 3. And I always move left to right when I'm starting to plot the points. It just makes it easier, just like I was talking about. Dun, 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 dun. Just like I was talking about Super Mario Brothers back there. Mario moving left to right, moving left to right on your TV screen. Think of that moving left to right on your graph. So a slope of 2 over 3 would be going up 2 and going over 3. Mario would go uphill, a positive slope, and he'd be running uphill from there to there. And you could also take this the other way, though. If you went down 2, that'd be like negative 2. You'd have to do over negative 3 to 
to make that positive 2 over 3. So you could also go in that direction, think about it going that way, that would be negative 2 over negative 3 is the same as positive 2 over positive 3. So all these should line up in a straight line. And let's graph that line at this point. So we'll connect all those together. Arrows there and there. And then let's just make a little note of in a different color here. This was a rise of plus two and a run of plus three right here. This is always going to be perpendicular. Uh, so we have that and that. If you remember something called the distance formula, we're not doing that here, but it's based on the Pythagorean theorem. I hope you notice the right triangle right there. Remember, leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared. So we could actually figure out the distance from that point to that point using the Pythagorean theorem. Pretty cool. Uh, last example, though. Example five. What if you have something that looks like this? Graph the lines x equals 3, and we'll say another one, y equals a negative 1. So some people look at this and say, um, I don't know what to do because there's not two variables and I don't understand this. It's not in slope-intercept form. I can't do this. Yeah, you can. These are the easiest ones actually to do. So if x equals 3, <coughs> it doesn't matter what y is, x always equals 3. It doesn't make a difference what y is. So this is where x always equals 3. We'll make a graph of this as well to make a little better sense of that. If that explanation didn't make sense. But here, it doesn't matter what your x value is. This is where y always equals negative 1. So here, let's write that down where y always equals negative 1. And so from there, let's draw a graph. I'm going to put both of these on the same graph because I can, because I feel like doing that. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. We'll go 5 in each direction again. I can't do that. Got to use that. There we go. And let's label our axes like they should be. This is an X. This is a Y. So let's start with this one first. This is where X is always equal to 3. It doesn't matter what your Y value is. It doesn't matter how far up or down you go. The X value has to always be 3. So there's a point right there. That's where X equals 3. But X is always 3. So if I went down, I still have to make sure X equals 3. If I go down farther, X still has to be 3. If I go up, X still has to be 3. doesn't matter of what my y value is. So I could have 3, 1, 3, 2, 3, 3, 3, 4, 3, 5, and so on. That's going to be the line right there. And so I've got, let's draw that vertically, make that a little skinnier here. That right there would be the line in question. That would be the line that x equals 3 right here. And so let's label that. This one is x equals 3. And y equals negative 1, well, that's where y is always equal to negative 1. So find y at negative 1 with the y-intercept right there. doesn't matter how far to the left you go. x could be negative 1, but y is still negative 1. x could be negative 2, but y is still negative 1. You go as far as you want, y still has to be negative 1. So we'd have a point crossing there, and it would just continue forever in both directions, going to the right and to the left. And so from there line in like so and put some arrows on that guy why is it not a girl Mr. Wagner I don't know it's do lines have feminine qualities or are they more masculine that's the question of the day that I will leave you with how about that so we have y equals negative one that's this line right here and one more thing I want you to write down, last thing to write down, is not another example, but 
this. I want you to, if you're one of my students, write this down, last thing. Read examples 10 and 11. Do that now. Go find your book, read those examples, look those over. On pages 343 to 344. <clears throat> I would go over some examples like that with you here, but I feel like reading those is going to be sufficient and just trying to make the videos a little shorter too this way so they're not quite as as much to take in all at once so read those examples for help with the word problems with this lesson there will be a, a few word problems to go with this lesson but those should help you out immensely if you read and understand those let me know if you don't understand them we can talk about them in class if you're one of my students and so that will do it for our introduction and review of graphing linear equations Hopefully you found that helpful. If you weren't too good at graphing linear equations before, I hope this helps you do a little better this time around. Uh, if this was brand new to you, hopefully you found that easy to understand. Go back and review as necessary, and you have a good day.